Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I'm going to take you through a good match of Capture the Flag I had in the Halo Infinite tech preview. Uh, I think there's, not only is it a good kind of taste of the gameplay, um, so if you're curious about how Halo, Halo Infinite's going to play, um, it's a good taste of that. It's not going to be like I'm the best Halo player, because I'm certainly not, um, but it'll be good to go through, talk you through some things that you can learn, things that I know I need to learn, things that I know that I don't do very well in Halo, um, and just kind of like enjoy some gameplay, but also get a little bit of breakdown and a little bit of kind of uh, learning, some Wheezy's War College style learning of the gameplay as we go. So let me just switch on over to the gameplay and fire it up, and we'll just kind of go through it uh, and, and kind of talk it out as we go. The, uh, I actually really like kind of the little touches they've done, the new intros and stuff, where uh, you see the players before the game and then you see your player after the game. It's kind of a nice little, nice little touch. Um, but this game very much just feels like classic Halo from back in the Halo Reach, Halo 3 days. Um, so starting out here, we're trying, again, this Capture the Flag now, the best way <laughs> to play an objective mode like Capture the Flag, especially in Halo, um, is to have a unit, like to have teammates that you're playing with, or even if they're randos, to be on comms. I didn't do any of that, <laughs> um, but uh, but we're gonna go through this anyway, and that's a thing you could learn, like just some get on comms. Sometimes it can be good just to hop in and be like, flag left, flag right, enemies pushing flag, stuff like that. Uh, right there, um, one of the big things on Halo that you need to know is that team shooting is very powerful because the time to kill in this game is so slow. Um, it really helps to have 2v1 or better engagement. So that first engagement, I got 2v1 and got owned. That next engagement, we 2v1 a couple of guys. So there's power in numbers in Halo. Even if you're not communicating, you're better off, rather than lone wolfing, um, sticking with your team. So here I see one of my teammates pushing the flag, and I know there's a guy up there, so I'm trying to help him push. So here we get up here, we team shoot, and I've got the capture. Now, the Halos, the Halo faithfuls of you out there will know that I should be flag juggling here, um, where you just dr jump and throw the flag, you jump and drop the flag, and it helps you go faster, and it also gives you the ability to defend yourself in case an enemy shows up like that. I'll need to work on that part of it. Stuff like that that's metagaming bugs me. It kind of breaks some of the immersion for me in games. Um, but if it's extremely valuable, I'll do it. So I definitely need to learn flag juggling in Halo. Um, I say learn it. I, I'm aware of how it works. Um, I just need to do it. So uh, the good thing about what I did there by just moving the flag, I knew I was probably going to get mobbed and die. So And I knew I had a teammate with me, so I was hoping he would protect me a little bit. But I wanted to get the, the flag as far as I could towards our side, and also leave it out in the open, so that if I got killed, which I did, and the flag drops out in the open, that eat that the enemy can't just sit there and reclaim the flag without our team having an opportunity to kill them, or the guy who's supposed to help be protecting me pick up the flag and move on. So what happened was, my teammate who was with me cleaned up the guy who killed me, got the flag, moved on, and we don't have a capture yet, because they grabbed our flag, so now we're kind of split. I'm sticking with our flag car carrier to try and keep him alive. Um, and our other two players uh, are going to try and recapture our flag because you have to have your flag at your base to score. So um, there they recaptured it. Our guy scored. That was some impromptu teamwork. Just if you understand how Halo works, you don't have to talk to your teammates to do that. Here I'm getting 2v1, so rather than trying to stick out that fight, uh, I back up, throw a grenade to try to force them back, and then look for a limited line of sight so that I can get the advantage on that fight. So I kill that one guy. Uh, the other guy stupidly comes back and picks up the flag, not trying to address where I am. Um, and so I managed to clean them up. I don't know where this other guy comes from, so he startled me a little bit, but I managed to clean him up as well. So, yeah, you just gotta go with that. I, oh, I took what should have been them getting the flag relatively easily if they had two or three players um, there against me, but using cover, using limited lines of sight, I was able to get the advantage in that engagement and keep them off, and we scored again. And the team, one of the guys on the other team brought me a rocket launcher, so I managed to, I managed to get some use out of that as well. Um, so here we've got an advantage. I didn't realize I had picked up an overshield, but I have an overshield. Uh, we've got an advantage, two flags to nil, and uh, right now I've got the battle rifle that I picked up off the wall. Uh, this map, it, it's going to be important in all Halo games. Halo Infinite will be no different. 
to understand where the, the weapons spawn on the map. So here in this room where I'm running into right now, see there, I'm picking up more ammo. Um, but that is where the uh, battle rifle spawns. Sometimes, depending on the game mode, it's the commando instead of the battle rifle. But uh, use that last rocket that I had to help clear up the guy who'd stolen our flag. Um, but, I mean, weapon management is huge in Halo because you don't choose loadouts. You... You start kind of gun game-ish, where you start with the same stuff. Everybody starts with an assault rifle and a pistol. I don't know if they're going to have varying game modes. I think some of the other games had some loadouts you could do, but... Based on this right now, you start out with your pistol and your AR, which is pretty typical Halo. And uh, unless you have a, a game mode like Shoddy Snipers or something like that, or, or Hardcore, where it starts you out with something specific, you have to rely on field pickups. You have to rely on your map knowledge to get power weapons, to get upgraded weapons. So here, I've, you know, I'm going back here. I've died, so I need to get another battle rifle. Um, just keep those things in mind. Pay attention to the power weapon spawns. This other team suffered heavily for not paying attention to the power weapon spawns. I'm right here, and I'd notice that, uh, I guess, yeah, that the power, the rocket launcher has spawned. It's over there, and no one's even near it or going for it. So I'm like, all right, I'll go get it. I tried to get that jump onto that first ledge. I haven't figured out the parkour for this map just yet. Um, and this is still early on. Like, this is probably one of my first five games of Infinite or something like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll go and pick up that power up. And I also <laughs> try to figure my way around the map. I forgot that you can turn in there to those stairs. Um, but I want to get high ground, especially with the rocket launcher, because firing down at people uh, is the easiest way to get kills with the rocket launcher, especially down at their feet, because it's the splash damage. Being able to hit someone specifically with a rocket is very difficult, um, and if it flies past them and hits on the wall behind them or the ground behind them, it's it's not as useful. So with the rocket launcher, you need to be firing at a downward angle. Even, even if you're on the same level, if you just jump and fire down, it will make you a lot more effective with the rocket launcher. Um, so here I'm taking damage, getting cover. I'm still watching out for my my team here. Like, I have the battle rifle, so I've kind of taken an Overwatch position. I could probably be doing more to help support or maybe even push the flag, but I've kind of taken a defensive role here, and I notice that they are stealing the flag, so I pull out my last rocket, because uh, I don't get that kill, but with that power weapon, right, that's one of the things that I can do, is help really protect the flag. Although, they clean us up, and they move along. Um, so, I think we give up this flag cap here. I'm not entirely sure what our team... Because the two of us got killed, and our other teammates, I don't think, managed to stop them in time. But I, I know I can't really get to the flag easily, especially not with uh, with the weapons that I spawn with. So, I grab the BR in case I have an opportunity, in case they get held up, I can support. They end up scoring, so it's kind of, it's kind of a reset time. So, I can see where my teammates are on the map. Enemies pushing over, we're kind of scattered, so I want to take a little bit of a defensive role here. I've kind of, based on my teammates' playstyle in this game, without talking to them, I've taken a defensive role because at least two or more of the teammates are consistently attacking their flag, which is good. You need someone to do that. I've been in games where the entire team defends the flag, and that's so irritating because you've got three people defending the flag, and then you're the only one trying to attack it, and you're getting team shot in every engagement. Um, that is a good example of why not to chase in Halo. It's an offensive and a defensive tactic. If you, if someone's shooting you and you take cover, throw a grenade behind you so that they can walk into it and die. Uh, and if you're chasing someone, be aware that they're probably going to throw a grenade and you can just walk right into it like I did. I keep that in mind usually with that guy. I had that, I had that hunger. I felt like I could, uh, I felt like I could clean him up and, and it cost me, so... Uh, there we managed to get that flag recover uh, before uh, before we got killed, but that was all kind of fast and furious, but that's that's really good classic Halo. Getting in there, playing the situation as it evolves, especially, I mean, when you're communicating, it's even probably even faster, right? Because you're talking and letting people know. Um, when you're not communicating and you're playing with randoms and stuff like that, you have to be able to adapt by perceiving what's going on. If you can't communicate with people and tell them, hey, go attack the flag or defend the flag, then you have to watch what they're doing and then adjust accordingly. You may want to uh, attack the flag, uh, and you may want to be the one who gets the caps or goes and slays or whatever, but if you're on a team where everyone's playing attack, then 
you're going to lose because no one's going to defend your flag. If you're playing a game where everyone's trying to defend, you're going to lose because someone needs to attack the flag. So sometimes you get in a situation where you can't fix that lack of communication enough to overcome the downside of the game. But um, anyway, that that is kind of the big takeaway from this. In the absence of uh, the ability to communicate team play, Pay attention to what the, the, your teammates are doing, to what's going on in the game, and fill the role. Excuse me. Blah, fill the role that needs to be filled um, so that your team can have success. If I had just jumped in with the other two guys and attacked and left one guy by himself on defense, that game probably wouldn't have gone the same and it wouldn't have gone nearly as well. Uh, that other team was actually decently well coordinated. Um, so, end here no captures, one return, one steal. Uh, I figured out after the fact that you can scroll through the scoreboard and see more data. Um, but. Uh, 13 kills and 6 deaths. Again, capture the flag, KD doesn't necessarily matter, but I took more of a defensive role, an overwatch role. So, 13 kills, 6 deaths, 4 assists, plus a flag return, and you guys saw me defend the flag a couple of times. Overall, uh, a successful game. So let me switch on back to my big ugly mug here, and that's gonna be a quick one, because that Halo matches are pretty quick, which is cool, but... Hopefully you learned a little bit of something from there. Hopefully you enjoyed some Halo gameplay. Uh, I'm looking forward to some more Halo when it comes out. Obviously, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in other shooters, but but Halo is 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 just solid. I mean, this game especially seems very solid, and it seems like it might be more of a return return to form. I did play Halo Five Guardians, and I did play what was the one before Halo Four. Was there one in between four and five? I'm not sure, but those never really caught my attention. I'm not sure if infinite will but it's looking pretty good because halo 3 back in the day i spent a lot of time on that halo reach i spent a lot of time on those were great games um so anyway if you guys like this halo content leave me a like if you don't like halo you can leave me a dislike leave me comments on on what you guys think about halo what you think maybe you guys are like you got you suck at you flag juggling maybe you, there's something you think i could have done better comments i love interaction with you guys if you're not a minion, subscribe to become a minion, and we will shoot lots of things in the face, and I will talk to you guys later.